Hello, and welcome back to Studio Session. I'm Catherine, and thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. For today's report, for reading, I'm still reading The Secret History, and I think this might be a Little Woman Part 2 moment. This book's just definitely going to take me a long time to get through, um, but it's pretty good so far. For eating, I would like to give a huge shout out to Mr. and Mrs. Parent for hosting our most recent swim pasta party. Um, we had so much great food, so I would like to give them a special shout out. Thank you for listening and appreciate you. For playing, I've been loving old like Disney and Nick songs. Um, me and my sister love to listen to them in the car. Just a little throwback moment. And this kind of goes into obsessing, which is just recently I've been watching on Netflix, like old reruns of Disney Nick shows. I'm currently watching Victorious. And because it's just so like stupid and like easy to follow along, it's nice to like just have on in the background for, you know, some throwbacks. For recommending, I recommend that today you make someone smile, tell a joke, compliment them, just uplift someone today. And for treating, I've just been really focused on putting aside some downtime for myself. Um, you know, so much studying, so much sports, just so much stuff after school. And I just want to make sure that I still have time to rest and have some downtime. That's it for today's report. And let's jump into our main segment. I am joined with Lucas for our main segment. And this is our final January segment. This is our last throwback for now, and we are ending on a good one. We are ending with News of the World by Queen. This is a rock album that was released in 1977. So my favorite track on this album, kind of a basic one, but I had to give it to We Are the Champions. This is just an iconic song. Um, the ending kind of almost feels incomplete because I swear this is like a Mandela effect. People like are so certain that it ends with we are the champions of the world, but it just ends with we are the champions. So I don't know, just a little fun fact there. Um, but I just, I love the lyrics. It's just an iconic song and amazing overall. So we are the champions had to be my number one. I agree. I also had we are the champions as number one, definitely one of the best uh, tracks of all time. Honestly, I really like this track and I think Catherine said it all. I think it's just, it's a great, it's great. Mo it's not motivational, but like a great victorious song, if that makes sense. Definitely agree. For my second favorite, I went with one that was kind of a different vibe than the others. I went with Sleeping on the Sidewalk. Um, it's kind of like more mellow, if that's the right word. Like the vocals are kind of softer. I just thought this was a cool song overall. I really liked it. Liked how it was kind of unique from a lot of the other ones on the album. Definitely very different from kind of like the more ballady we are the champions but i think that's kind of why i liked it so sleeping on the sidewalk was my second favorite uh, i also said sleeping on the sidewalk for my second most favorite i said it was a nice change of pace from a couple other songs in this album which i will be getting into shortly um i like the storytelling aspect and i really appreciated this line soon we had the record of the year uh just a great storytelling song i love the instrumentals per usual and this is my second most favorite song I think it's really interesting that we have the same number one and two. I think this might be the first album where we've had the same top two picks. It's definitely really interesting. Okay, it's time for my least favorite. I gave it to Sheer Heart Attack. Um, this song just really jumps right in and hits you with music right away, which I think I'm more of a fan of when there's like a little bit of a build up. Um, this song was just chaotic. It kind of felt like I was having a heart attack when I was listening, um, kind of all over the place. And it just wasn't really my vibe, I think. Um, towards the end, there were background noises that I absolutely hated and they kind of like gave me a headache. I don't know. I just was not the biggest fan of this song. So Sheer Heart Attack was my least favorite. Okay. So I'm going to need you to remind me, this is about episode 14 or 15, right? 14, correct. Okay. So we're 14 episodes deep and I just handed out my first zero out of 10 on a song and I gave it to Get Down, Make Love. If you told me that this was the worst song in history, I wouldn't disagree with you, quite frankly. Um, I don't even know where to start. It's just not good. The lyrics are not good. I didn't want to listen to it again. I didn't want to listen to it in the first place. Um, the background noises are just horrific. Um, not much more to say about this. I gave it a 0 out of 10. Least favorite, Get Down, Make Love. Just not. That's why, again, nice change of pace on Sleeping on the Sidewalk is because it directly follows this song, which actually took a half point out of my album rating just because of this one song. Um, so yeah, Get Down, Make Love, least favorite on this album. 
I also really did not like this song, and it would have been my least favorite if it weren't for the horrendous background noise in the background of Sheer Heart Attack. So that was this was very close to being my least favorite as well. Okay, and for my underrated pick of the album, I gave it to Spread Your Wings. I just really like the storyline in this song. It's kind of about a guy who's like changing his life. I don't know. I just I really liked it. Um, I liked the kind of I liked the music too. I liked the instrumentals in the background. Just an overall well-rounded song that I think is definitely underrated. I gave my most underrated pick to All Dead, All Dead. Um, I said it had shades of Killer Queen a little bit from a vocal and instrumental standpoint. It was a really solid track. Good synth usage, and I like how the track escalated with about a minute left. So I'm saying that All Dead, All Dead is my most underrated on this album. Okay, so for my overall album ranking, I gave this album a 7 out of 10. Um, I'm a big Queen fan. They're one of my favorite bands, and I adore a ton of their songs. Um, however, not many of like my all-time favorites were on this particular album, um, so I wouldn't call it like one of my favorite Queen albums, but I think it was solid all around. Um, a lot of songs I liked, a couple I didn't like as much, but overall, really, really good album, and yeah, 7 out of 10. Uh, for maybe the first time in uh, podcast history, again, I have a lower rating. I have a 6.5 out of 10. I just wasn't really a fan of some of the songs on this album, and that kind of did it for me. There also isn't really a connection. This is more of a compilation album, although it's officially just a regular studio album. It just feels like there's no clear path between tracks, and just there's just some low moments. There are some definitely high moments. I love how the top two songs, like in terms of success, are the, tar uh, the start. But then the downside of that is there's nothing for the last about 10 tracks um, that, you know, I had never heard any of these songs. I'm glad I have now, but 6.5 feels like an appropriate rating for this album. Wow, I think you're right. This might be the first time I've given a higher rating, which is definitely crazy to think about. Thank you so much for listening to our main segment, and let's jump into our game. All right, for our little game show kind of segment, we have another Playlist Essentials, and today's theme is our favorite throwbacks that were not mentioned on the podcast this month. So these are songs that we really like, they just weren't in any of the albums that we reviewed. Okay, so my third place, I gave it to Dream On by Aerosmith. I love this song, and I think I was kind of like reintroduced to it through, there was like a national like college dance competition a couple weeks ago that was like taking over social media, I saw it everywhere. And I think it was like the Minnesota dance team danced to Dream On by Aerosmith. And it was just like life-changing. I think they should have won. I think they got second place. I think they should have won personally. But um, some of you might know what I'm talking about. And they just did this beautiful dance to it. And it made me like almost rediscover the song. This is just such a powerful song. I love it so much. And I saw a video the other day where it was like, this is one of the songs that would like play if the world was ending. And I was like, it's so true. I don't know. It just kind of makes you think about life. It's just so powerful. So Dream On by Aerosmith is my third place. So you know it's not a playlist essentials if I don't give some honorable mentions because I'm indecisive with these things. Uh, first one, Get Down On It by Cool and the Gang. Love this song. I wasn't sure if I named it. This would definitely be in my top three, but I thought I had named it before, and I didn't go back and listen to all the other episodes. So that's my first honorable mention. Second one, Ready or Not by the Fugees. You know I have some Lauren Hill in here. But my third place is Bohemian Rhapsody. Just felt appropriate. Um, this one's from 1975, definitely a very old track. And just one of the tracks of all time. Um, just the, the music is just great. Freddie Mercury uh, does his thing. This is just an incredible song, and I like it for my number three spot. Okay, so my second place is also a Queen song that um, – we did not review, and that is Radio Gaga by Queen. I just love this song. Um, it just shows appreciation for the radio, you know? It, it's just it's just such a good song. It's fun, and I can't remember, like, the first time I heard it. It was, like, a couple years ago, and I just immediately loved it, and it's always been one of my favorite Queen songs for that reason. Um, definitely well-known. Not, like, one of their, like, most all-time popular, but I think it's definitely underappreciated, and I just love Radio Gaga by Queen so much. That's my second pick. For my second pick, I selected Free Bird by Leonard Skinner. Um, this is more just a track that I feel like I would like more than a lot of other people because I'm afraid of flying. So whenever my plane is taking off, not I don't own a plane, but whenever I'm in a plane that's taking off, I put this song on as we're making liftoff so my mind focuses on the song, which is incredible. The ramp up is incredible. 
once you get to that middle part where the guitar starts coming, it's like, -na -na -na, it's just incredible. Um, that's the only word I have to describe it. And I say Freebird is my second for this category. Okay, and my first favorite throwback that was not featured this month, I gave it to Separate Ways, um, also known as Worlds Apart by Journey. This song is just, it's, it's just so good. Um, I love listening to it when I'm like driving late at night. It's just, it's another powerful one. Um, I don't know, I just love it so much. Um, I'm pretty sure it was featured in the newest season of Stranger Things too, um, which kind of again, just like made me rediscover it and re-love it. Um, it's just, it's just such a good song, love it so much. So Separate Ways by Journey, incredible song. Speaking of Stranger Things, my number one is Running Up That, and no it's not, I'm kidding. Um, my number one is Love's In Need Of Love Today by Stevie Wonder. I, this song is just so incredible. This might be the pinnacle of music. Um, very long track, definitely uh, around 10 minute mark for this one. I just can't get over how incredible the vocals are on this song. There's some humming. Um, this track has been sampled countless times. I'm sure I've touched on that before. And I might have even said this one before for Playlist Essentials. Honestly, I know I left Get Down On It off for that reason, but I don't even care. This song is so good, I had to put it on again, even if I did already. I this It's just a perfect song, and it's my favorite throwback song that we didn't feature this month, and all time. Definitely some great picks and a great way to end our throwback month. So let's jump into our final segment today. Okay, so for our final segment, as always, we're going to be covering what to expect next. So like I said, this is our final January episode. Um, so we're coming back with a new month. However, unfortunately, um, we have a scheduling conflict on the first when we would be recording our first February episode. Um, so we will not be giving you guys an episode for Friday. We'll be back next Wednesday. Um, my apologies. But we are starting our February month with 2010's pop and we are starting off super strong with 1989 by taylor swift which i know was re-recorded and released this year um but it was originally recorded in 2014 so that's what we're going with we will be listening to taylor's version don't worry and reviewing the vault tracks but i think because it was originally recorded in 2014 we are definitely going to count it for 2010's pop okay any final notes so i've got a lot of stuff to get through so i'm just going to get it off as quick as i can I have good, bad, and other for this weekend. It was a very interesting weekend for music, including yesterday. Good. Everybody Can't Go by Benny the Butcher. Oh my goodness, I've listened to this album about maybe a dozen times already. And, and I mentioned Benny the Butcher on Twitter and he retweeted me. So that was incredible. Second time he's retweeted me. Bad, Nicki Minaj's diss track. This, when I said that Get Down Make Love is the worst song of all time, I think this song Bigfoot by Nicki Minaj might rival it. It's a diss track at um, Megan Thee Stallion, and I think Nicki should have kept this one to herself. It was just not good at all. Sounds like AI wrote it. Uh, four other albums I listened to this weekend. AM by Arctic Monkeys, Lord Willen by Clips, and The Sun's Tirade plus Sylvia Demo by Isaiah Rashad. All incredible albums. Just wanted to shout them out. And my last note, one year has passed since Lil Yachty released Let's Start Here, his alternative album, very Tame Impala-esque. Definitely recommend everyone go listen to that if you haven't already. That's all I have for today. We don't really have any good um, albums coming out this weekend, so you're not missing anything. Go listen to Everybody Can't Go, Let's Start Here, and all those albums I named. Do not listen to the new Nicki Minaj song. She does not need the streams. Wow. Sorry, Nicki. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye.